All right, one of the most common questions I get is how do I better hear X sound in Y game? Today I'm gonna to show you how to set up your audio correctly for games. I'm gonna teach you how to record a sound clip, how to analyze a sound clip, and then how to emphasize your equalization to hear any sound you want better in any game you want. Sound pretty cool? Let's do it. All right, what's going on guys? Today we are gonna help you hear footsteps better in Warzone. Now the goal here will be, by the end of this video, you'll be able to take any audio cue in any game and really dial in the sounds for that audio cue specifically. So this should translate across any game for you. It should translate to any specific audio cue you want. So I intend to start with the more complex stuff that I don't think you'll see anywhere else. And then we'll kind of dummy it back and go backwards and get to the more basic stuff. First, we'll start with actual frequency response analysis of sound clips. And then we'll go on and move to how do you EQ your sound setup to emphasize those certain cues we might want to make pop. And then we'll factor in the biggest variable, your specific headphones. And then lastly, we'll backtrack to the actual in-game audio settings. And then lastly, we'll confirm that you have the right audio settings set up in Windows. Okay, ready to go? Let's, t let's dive right into it. So what I've done here is I've got four different clips from Warzone, just random from my highlights folder. This is a good way to grab audio clips. Uh, NVIDIA Highlights does a great job of just pulling in. Uh, you can set up for specific games to record uh, deaths, kills, all that stuff. The good thing about that is that one, you can pull up times that you specifically go down on your own or a teammate goes down and you can replay those and see what I could have done better in that situation. But the other thing you can do is pull out audio cues from it. It's really handy that way. Uh, the other thing you could do would be to record audio clips in OBS if you don't have an NVIDIA sound or GPU. So let's just take a look real quick. Uh, I'll try and dial back the game audio as best I can. But here's the first clip. Let's take a look at this. You showed them no mercy. Now you can see I picked that clip because right there at the end, we've got some very distinct footstep sounds that we want to dial in and look at. So let's go ahead and use one of my favorite audio programs for recording, actually. This is good for just basic microphone recording. It also helps you to analyze sound clips. So this is Audacity. It's a free program. You can pull it for free off the net. It's really complex and we can uh, have that discussion another time on scientifically what all it's doing and diving into, but that's not the purpose of this video. I'm just going to show you how to get what you want out of it. You can go elsewhere and find out the actual scientific, uh, scientific data behind it and stuff and what it's actually doing when it's doing the things I'm asking it to, but that does get pretty complex for this video, so we won't go there yet. So I'm just going to take that same clip and drag it into Audacity here. And you can see I get a full frequency response analysis there. And as we play the spectrum, you can see it's just the same thing. You showed them no mercy. Stand by. Now you can see in that audio clip, it starts with some real noisy stuff at first and then some noisy distractions that we don't want to focus on. We really just want to pull in on right here. And I'll play this again for you. We can play just this specific piece that I've highlighted. Okay, so now we have just the footstep sound that I want to pull out and hear more about. So we can click on Analyze here, and then once you're in the Analyze, you look at Analyze Plot Spectrum, and then when you pull this up, I've got it set up already to click on the algorithm here. Do you want this enhanced auto correlation? So again, I'm not going to get into the science about what's happening here, but what I can tell you it's doing is this first big peak here that you see, this is the loudest noise. And this is happening, it looks like, right at about 988 hertz. And what this is, just helping you pull it out, is the ambient sound cues. That's the sound of the actual gulag itself that we're in. So that's not what we want. In fact, we may want to pull that down later. So when we take some notes here, we'll note that emphasis. What we want to pull here is these little clips here, these peaks, and they happen to be right at 192 
147, 141, and 124. So I'm gonna get out notepad here. I'll just pull this off to the side. And let's see here, we had about 190, 190. So we'll just, we'll just call that 190 to make it easy. We had a 147 and a 140. So we'll just call that 145. And then this is 124. And just because I already know about some 10 band equalizers and stuff, we're just gonna call it 125 for ease of use, close enough. All right, so that's good. We can close out this clip. Let's take a look at the second clip. All right, so there we had some footsteps and a slide that we might, might want to pick up. So let's drag that in here. And you can see here's the whole cue. We'll play just the audio piece of it. All right, so you can see the sound that we want to pull out is right here. Really don't want anything else. That's what we want. Let's. All right, so we run the analyze plot spectrum taking a look at the enhanced correlation again. Here's our peak happening here. This one's happening 800 hertz. So we've got kind of 800 to 1,000. Let's just make a note of that here, that 800 to 1,000 is that ambient noise. And then we have some real great peaks here. We have one at 183. So we'll just put 185 to make it even. We got another one here at 146. And I'm just going to put a comma here to note that we basically had another 145 and then here we had a 125 so it looks like 125 registered a sound clip again okay so we'll close that one here's the third clip all right so this clip has some really good on the floor beneath us some footsteps on a different floor on a little bit of a different surface, so that's noteworthy as well. So let's pull that in here. So we can note that this early spike here is my magazine reloading and it kind of masks some of what we're trying to pick up. So we're gonna skip just past that part and highlight all these other ones just past it. All right, so let's analyze that plot spectrum. We see here we have a peak at 121. So for our 10 band equalizer, I'm gonna register that as a 125 again. And then we've got 102. So it looks like the first thing I can tell you about that 102 is basically what's happening there is since it's on a floor beneath us, it's registering lower on the frequency response curve. So it's a more bassier note. Then we've got a couple other small spikes here at looks like 99 and 97. So I think what we'll probably just call that here is 100 a couple times. So you can see we've got some, some consistent things happening with our sound clips here. And let's do one more. So that's a good one because we had a door in there as well. So that catches the door as well as his footsteps coming up. So when we analyze that plot spectrum, we get a peak here at 149. We're gonna call that 145 again. We got another one at 131. So I'm actually gonna call that another 125 because it's so close. And this one's at 127. So we're gonna call that another 125. So the takeaway from this, again, I'm not getting gonna get into the science of it, but basically what you're noting here is all of our footsteps are happening from basically 100 Hertz all the way up to 190. So 100 to 200 is really where that, that emphasis is. And you can see that the bulk of it is happening repeatedly consistently from 125 to 150. So the other thing we can note is that if you're in the Gulag, you have that 800 to 1000 where you're really wanting to actually pull that one back. So let's close Audacity here. That's a handy tool, but we've gotten everything we need from it there. And so now we're gonna take a look at, before we dive into an actual EQ profile, let's open up REW. So this is looking at the DT770, okay? This is the 770 with pleather pads. And I highlight this one because you'll notice it has a 
bump here from about 70 hertz and it stops about 200. So you can notice it's got like a very ideal peak in the frequency response curve for footsteps. It's already there, it's already emphasizing it. Now there are other things about this headphone that you might not like, but it's important to know that this one's already kind of tuned for war zone footsteps, which is kind of neat. It's just good to know. I wanted to pull that one out for you and kind of show you that this makes a big difference in which headphones we're using. So now let's open up, uh, let's take a look at the, let's look at the 1990. All right, so what I did here was open up the analytical and the balance pads on the 1990. And you can see from 100 to 200 is fairly flat. And I did that on purpose because the way you're gonna tune the 1990 is gonna be much different than the way you're gonna tune the 770. Then the 1990 is gonna need a hump there. The 770 does not. So when we're doing that, then it, it makes a real big difference on which headphones you're using. I'm gonna show you one more example. And let's use another popular one. Let's do the uh, M50X, the Audio-Technica M50X. All right, so you can see the M50X has a bump apparently there, but it's also boosting everything around that frequency response. So in order to emphasize this one, you're gonna have to either emphasize the boost like you're going to on the 1990, or maybe more importantly, pull down the surrounding area. So you might grab between two and 300 and pull it down and pull from maybe 70 to 100 and pull it down. And I say that because that's a pretty bassy headphone. So the way you're gonna tune the M50X and the 770 are gonna be similar. You don't want to just boost up the bass because they're already real bassy headphones. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna cause yourself bass fatigue. You don't want that. So if you have a real bassy headphone already in that region, you really wanna work on pulling the areas around it down in this instance. And in the 1990, where it's fairly flat, we're gonna boost. So now let's go and look at an actual equalizer and how you can do this. So I'm gonna show you two different examples of this. So here we have the Motu Ultralight MK4 that I'm using. And you can see here, I wanted to show you here, I realize that most people don't have uh, an interface with this many features. So maybe this isn't as accessible, but it's important because one of the things you can use if you're sound card doesn't have the ability to tune a band, a frequency band, the way that we want to today, you can use a program called Equalizer APO. It's a free program for PC. It's something that you can get as fine a detail as I'm going to here, and it'll show you some of the settings that I would apply in Warzone. So in this instance, you'll see what I've done here. This is right at about 150, and I've created a, at the frequency response of 150 Hertz, I added a six dB boost. So I'm adding six decibels to that spike and I'm doing it with a Q factor of 1.2, okay? So I just wanted to show you that. So if you're gonna use equalizer APO, you want to use a peak fil filter at 150 Hertz, six dB boost, Q factor 1.2. You don't wanna do a shelf. A shelf is gonna look like that. That is what you, you don't want that because that's gonna boost all the sub bass below it. If you're boosting the sub bass as well, all the explosions and stuff are gonna drown out your footsteps. So you don't want that. So that would those would be the type of settings that you would want if you're gonna do war zone footstep EQ with equalizer APO or something similar to this. Now let's look at what you would do if you're gonna use a sound blaster sound card. All right, so if we go into our equalizer here, you can find whichever one that you want to use. Okay, so if you go down to, let's just take a quick, I did a video on this, but here's their footstep curve. And you can see here's 125, here's neutral. They've actually pulled it down. So like in Warzone, this default footstep enhancer is no good, do not use this. Now let's look at if we use something, if we just go in and create our own, and going to like gaming, you can see I've already done this one here. And all I did, this is a 10 band equalizer. You can do this with any 10 band equalizer. And you can see that 10 bands just means at each of these points, I have the ability to boost or pull down. And you can see it's got a band at 30 Hertz, which would be our sub base, 60, 125, 250, 500, 1000, 2K, 8K, 16K. 
So what we want to do is, again, we don't, we don't have the ability to get into 145 or 150, but we have that repeated emphasis at 125. So we can just pull up 125 for a 6 dB boost. That would be great for Warzone. The other thing you could do is if you want the Gulag at that 100 to 1000 to be a little quieter, you could pull that one by about two or three dB, should be plenty good. Three, I would try it at three and see if it's too much. It's Keep in mind, it's gonna mask any other frequencies or sound cues that happen at that, activate that same frequency. So I, I would probably start at three and see if it masks anything else that you really didn't want to. So that hopefully is really helpful. That should help you fine tune and not only fine tune for footsteps for Warzone, but it should help you find any audio cue in any game and figure out what it is. So with that, let's actually look at sound settings within Warzone itself. Let's do that next. All right, guys, here we are. We're loaded up in Warzone. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the options here. We're going to go over to audio, and this is probably the most important piece right here. We want to have the audio mix set to boost. Bo just trust me on this one. I'm not going to go into all the details. I thought about testing and showing you guys how it actually measures and all that. Uh, the important part here is just helping you get this game right. Boost is the one you want. After you're on boost, the rest of this is pretty subjective. I keep my master volume at 75. That's because of other applications and things that I run that I want to mix my sound a certain way. You mix it however you want. I like the music real low, dialogue at 75, effects at 75. So you can play with your own the way you want. That's just how I have it. None of this is really important because a lot of it's going to be so different from one configuration to the other or uh, your preferences versus my own. So. Once we have that right, and we know that Warzone's set up on boost, we've tweaked our own EQ to have it just the way we want. Now the final piece of it is the most basic piece, and that's just making sure that we have our Windows audio set up correctly. So we'll move into that next. All right, so now on the Windows desktop, you can just go down here to the speaker icon in the uh, little tray there and open sound settings. Once you're inside your sound settings, you want to look at which device you're using. You know, this is going to my Motu interface and your master volume here, there's a lot of um, misinformation out there. You want your master volume close to maximum. Now, there are some caveats there and maybe some exceptions, but generally speaking, just think of it this way. You're taking your digital signal and sending it to the amplifier. Once that digital signal is uh, converted into an analog signal, the analog circuitry in your amplifier is then going to amplify or boost that digital signal to be audible in your headphones. The harder it has to work, the more likely you are to hear the noise of the components in the amplifier. The other thing with that is, is that noise is cumulative. Your DAC, meaning your sound card or your interface or whatever it is you're using, has noise of its own. We're going to be adding the noise of your sound card and the noise of your amplifier. So you want to have one sending the cleanest, strongest signal to be amplified and then need less amplification. That's the ideal scenario. Now, the caveats there are with an amplifier, if you have a simple desktop amplifier, something fairly inexpensive, say an Atom amp or one of the basic um, shit audio amps or something like that, at the very low volumes, that um, volume pot will have most of its channel imbalance towards the you know, first few settings there, meaning your left and right signal will come most into being perfectly equal when you get to about nine o'clock on the dial. So you wanna get to about nine o'clock and then anything from nine o'clock on is fine. So if you have your Windows sound volume near max and you can't get near nine you're at like seven and you have a slight channel imbalance back off your windows audio a little bit and then pull the amplifier up so that you get perfect channel balance so then once we're in here click on device properties you kind of look at everything here make sure that spatial sound is off do not let windows mess with your sound profile the game engine is going to have its own way of dealing with audio. Don't let Windows get in there and be another layer between 
the actual sound that's coming from the game developers and you don't don't insert another layer into that keep their stuff out of it and then when we click on additional device properties you can see here this is just the basic icon your levels and then under advanced you want to be at 48,000 hertz not 41 or 441 not 96 not 192 we're talking games here almost all games or at least when we're talking triple a major development titles are mixed and mastered at 48,000 hertz so the second you get off that again you're deviating from the original sound signal so we could get into all the geekiness about super sampling and resampling and whatever it is you're doing for but you're just they mixed it at 48, play it at 48. The fewer variables in this, the better. So once you have that, you're at 48,000 hertz. 16 bits actually probably fine. I do do 24 bit. We could get into the reasons why there, but really as long as you're on 16 bit, 48,000, that's gonna be what everything's mixed at, so that's where you wanna be. So hopefully guys, that's the basic stuff. Hopefully all this comes together and really helps answer some questions you have about how do you really dial in to hear a specific sound in a specific game. Hopefully in Warzone, you can try out these settings that we did today and they really benefit you. I honestly believe these will give you a competitive advantage if you execute them right and just the way we walked through them today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly enjoyed making it. As always, don't forget to follow me on Twitter so that you know what I'm working on next. Don't forget to like and subscribe so I can keep doing reviews for you. And as always guys, stay safe out there. Take care.